I got to rough in five different fixtures in this shower. We've got a body sprayer, two body sprayers actually, a handheld, a shower head, a rain head, and I made the customer take the plans and draw exactly where everything is gonna go. And the valve that we're gonna be installing along with it is this electronic Kohler valve. Now it's got six ports coming out the side of it. We're only gonna use five. We'll block off the sixth. Out the bottom here, these are our water inlets. So we've got hot and cold inlet, and then we've got mixed water coming out of it, which is why you only see six ports and not 12. This has to get mounted in the wall, pretty much where I'm sitting right now. And then all of the shower fixtures need to be installed. It's gonna require blocking and starting to lay out all these different things. And I just don't know if this is gonna fit in the wall. There's so much going on inside this shower. It's like, it's gonna be like our car wash in here. There's so many things. Man, I sound like a freaking complainer. The hell they want them so close together for? I don't understand people sometimes. So one of the things that's tricky about these shower sprayers, and I'll show you. So this is the this is the body sprayer that's gonna go in this house. I don't wanna scratch it, so I'm gonna be very careful with this. There's a very, very brassy looking, brassy but sassy. And then this is the receiver that's gotta go. This is the part that's gotta have some, some coordination as far as the depth of it in the wall. And then this is in the wall. I don't wanna, I don't wanna scratch this thing. This, this then sits really nice in there. And then that's all you see coming out of the wall. So here's first word to the wise. Um, if you're doing more than one body sprayer on the same shower circuit, you're gonna wanna do an equalizer loop like this, where you're gonna have equal pieces of pipe so that when the water comes out, it's dispersed evenly. If you have extra ports on your valve, like I got six ports on this valve, there makes zero sense to try to do that equalizer loop. Instead, we're just gonna zone out each of the body sprayers so that we don't have any water pressure problems. After you get done mounting all your blocking, you're gonna to wanna to install what I call drop ears, which are these guys right here. Now, one thing that I do that's a little overkill is, I like to use a bigger screw, so I, I drill these out so that they can accommodate a decent sized screw. So you can really like crank on something and not worry like, it's gonna pull out of the wall. So I'm gonna go ahead and mount these, but I wanted to show you how I lay them out on my blocking. So let's take a look at the shower head. That's a So then when you go to mount your screw, you'll line the threaded portion of this up with your intersection, but then you can line up all the holes with the lines as such. Start with the top one first, get it, Keep it kind of loose so you can get the other two just perfect. Tighten down the other side real good. Okay, that's it. Don't over tighten it, but that's it. Now this block is loose and here's why it's loose. I will then come back with my square. So I leave this block loose until I get this dude in place until I can guarantee that I've got a half inch of this sticking through the wall. After you get all your fixtures installed, what I like to do is I'll just kind of take a moment and admire what I've done so far. Once that's over, uh, you gotta figure out a way to get those mixed lines back to our shower valve. Oh, and by the way, we are gonna use all six zones for that shower valve because this is a two-stage rain head, which means it's got two different functions to the rain head, and that'll require an additional zone. So we got two body sprayers, a handheld, a shower head, a two-zone rain head, partridge in a pear tree. All right, so 
getting a little dusty. All right, so I gotta mount this valve in the wall. This is the power supply. We're gonna need that a little later. What do they give us? Give us some sort of spacer brackets or something? Okay. Okay. So I gotta mount these tabs onto the four corners of here. So they got like these little clips right here and they're gonna like slide into these holes. And then you got a little screw. All right, I got those brackets. That'll make it real easy to mount. Anything else in this box I need to know about? Nope. I'm really getting sick of working on my knees. It's killing me. All right, sitting on the floor. Oh, I've been sitting on the floor a lot past couple of days. All right, so this valve is gonna mount something like that. Yeah. Conveniently, this whole getting hot out I'm crabby the problem is is that I had to stub these one inch lines through the floor before any of the house was built and I'm pretty sure I'm right on the money as far as enough in the back but let's just take a measurement of where these actually ended up so they ended up about a half an inch back so These pipes make it to where, ooh, I like that. That's a two by four. Son of a gun. Okay, so I'm gonna mount some two by fours on the back here, and then we should be able to cut these PEX pipes. I got some quick connectors. We're gonna slam it together. A couple months ago, I put all this together and uh, had to kind of guess where the pipes were gonna come out of the wall. So, but I planned for something nice and solid, like, like a two by four, to mount this sucker to. And I made sure that the pipes came up out of the floor, which was the hardest part. And uh, if you're interested in that video, for my next trick, I have that video in the description for you. Okay, so this, if I hold my tape measure in the center of the hole, to the center of the hole, it's 19 and three quarters. There's an easy way to do the center on this, at 19 and three quarters to the top of here. And then you take your next block, and you set that at your top height. So after you get the blocks mounted, you check your heights, and we're gonna mount up really nice. But we got a problem. We've got these all need to be blasted out. So I'm gonna show you a way that I like to do that. So then I'll take my drill bit, and I center the, the, the guide, or the uh, screw point, or the drill point, whatever you wanna call it, right? in the middle of the stud. We're gonna take it down. Oh, and by the way, this, this is an inch, the cylinder. So once this metal is flush with the rest of the stud, we're done. All right, after you get all that notched out, this guy should fit right in place. Oh yeah, that's gonna, and what I'm looking for is I wanna make sure that I got plenty of room behind these brass fittings so that when I slide my PEX on, or my, my PEX connectors, everything works out. Sometimes it don't work out, but in this case, it's absolutely gonna work out. Everything has got plenty of room. Now the next step, I gotta cut these 
and then I got some quick connectors to, to go in place. So I will preload the quick connectors onto here. Let me go get those. I'm stuck. Ugh. Damn tiny house, it's got me again. Did I mention it's like 87 degrees out today? Probably can tell by my sweaty face. So I got some ice cream sandwiches this morning. Because I knew I'd be overheating a little bit. I will say that's one of the nicest things about working on tiny houses is the fact that I have a refrigerator in the kitchen. I don't miss cooking shit on job sites at all. All right, so this is a push to get, these are Push Connects uh, Aqua Locks by Watts. I like this brand, pretty, pretty nice. Um, this goes from three quarter to one inch. So our valve here is three quarter. Now they got this plastic mabobber, that's gotta go in first. And all that does is it makes sure that the pipe doesn't cut the O-ring. And then these guys, they'll just slide on there like that, and then that's it. And then it's going to get a, retain, a retention clip. And then that's it. It's, it works like a Chinese finger trap. I like these for this type of stuff because if you need to service it, it's really easy to service the valve without trying to like sweat and unsweat a bunch of crap. But I'm sure somebody will have something stupid to say about it, but they don't leak and I like them. So there's that. It's really easy to trim this crap out too. Sometimes you can check if that little plastic thing is bouncing around and it's not in all the way. But those are definitely those are in. All right. For the other side, I just got to cut them level for that. Use the cigar cutter. I'm going to cut it a little lower and get the uh, caps off of here. Oh, that's a beautiful sound. You know what I just heard? I pressurized this thing like three months ago. All right. This is probably my least favorite LaCroix, is this mango. Um, oh, it's like taking a shot of hard liquor. I don't even drink. Um, but I imagine, well, I mean, I used to drink a lot. Now I'm sober. And sober is much better. Moment of truth. Where are my little top hats? Here's one. It's gotta go on there. Where's the other one? This is the worst thing about tiny houses. Is like always caught sitting down. Okay, do I got my locks on? I do now. All right, then we gotta send these home. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that is like as clutch as it gets. Woohoo! Take a look at that. There's our valve in the wall. And see why those connectors work so well? They just click clack. We done. Now I gotta run all the pipes. But this part's pretty simple. I'm really excited I got this done. At least got it this far. I gotta send some screws, mount this sucker up. And then from here, I just gotta run my packs, which is really simple. And uh, I got videos about that, but today is super hot. Cheers to everybody working outside. See you tomorrow.